Edo must move forward. <laughs> yes, greetings to you, Edo State people and Nigerians across the world. My name is Comrade Lamti Oriaki, and this is the Comrade Show. Edo must move forward. What you just saw was the signature tune that heralded the second coming of Governor Godwin Obaseki and, of course, Philip Schreiber. It was a beautiful moment for Edolites across the world. Most Edo's knew this tune, sang to this tune, worked very hard to deliver the re-election of Gono Gono Baseki and Philip Shoaibo for the second time. With this tune, people were happy. There was unity. There was cooperation. But more than this, there was hope for the future of Edo State. There was the belief that the election of these two will turn Edo State into an Eldorado that we have always dreamt of, to the point that the Edo dream would have been achieved. An Edo dream where opportunities were abound for the people, an Edo dream where development will be the second name of Edo State, an Edo dream where the entire Nigeria will start her growth following the footsteps of the government of Edo State because the people believed. And Edo dream where Godfatherism will have no place. That was what the people believed. That is what we believed. And nobody, nobody would think, would imagine that a day like this would come when where what we'll be discussing would be that things have gone so sad between these two that the impeachment have not come into place. As a matter of fact, there are so many questions. And one of those questions is what has actually gone wrong between these two? The governor and the deputy of Baseki and Philip Shraibu. Today, Philip Shraibu stand, stands impeached as a deputy governor of industry. As a matter of fact, he's been replaced. That is the news that greeted Edolites just within the last 24 to 48 hours. But we have gone around to dig out some inside story to find out exactly what had gone on. But the fundamental question remains, what is it that has happened between this too. As we get along, we may find out what may have happened. But the other question, as subtext to the main question, would be Have we eventually achieved the Eldorado that we had hoped for in 2020? Or can it be argued effectively? That even while we have used this tool to fight Godfatherism in a do state, have we enthroned another Godfather as far as a do state is concerned? These are fundamental questions. As the day go by, we'll find answers for. Don't go away. Immediately, Shri Shraibu was impeached. Everybody was confused. Everybody was waiting. He released a statement. We will start from there. And of course, I'm going to show you guys what went on that many of you may not have seen. Stay with us. It is a Comrade Show and my name is Comrade Lantic Mamusa Oriahi. A do must move forward. Hopefully, truly, a do must move forward. <laughs> Stay with me. This is a Comrade Show. Yes, my people, please, if you are just watching us for the first time or you've been watching us before, Facebook, on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the notification button, and of course, we are going to a new era altogether as far as you know, politics is concerned in a do state. But this is a very serious matter. Philip Shaibo impeached. He had this to say. Let's take a listen. My good people of a do state. I thank you all for standing by me under these troubling circumstances as the Deputy Governor of Edo State. 
it is a heavy heart, yet a resolute spirit, that I come before you to address the recent events that have unfolded within our dear state. I denounce in strongest term the illegal impeachment by the Edo State House of Assembly over Trump up charges. This is not just an attack on me as an individual, but on the very democratic principle that we hold there. It's a dangerous descent into dictatorship and a threat to the foundation of our democracy. Let it be clear that this impeachment was harsh because of my ambition to contest the Edo State 2024 governorship election under the People's Democratic Party, PDP. An ambition that is a legal right to all citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's a sad reality that in our political landscape, ambition is meant with resistance. And those in power seek to silence opposition through illegitimate means. I have dedicated my life to serving the good people of Edo State with integrity and honesty. I have worked tirelessly to improve the life of our citizens. I have uphold the values of democracy and justice. And yet, in return, I am faced with baseless accusations and a blunter disregard for due process and rule of law. The allegations brought against me are nothing more than a full screen to conceal the true motive behind this impeachment. It's a flagrant abuse of power and a betrayal of the trust that the people of Edo have placed in their elected officials. We refuse to stay inactive while our democratic institutions manipulate and exploit for personal gain. We will fight this injustice with every order of strength in our being for the sake of the people of Edo State and the future of democracy. I call upon all well-meaning citizens of Edo and indeed all Nigerians who believe in the principle of democracy and justice to stand with us in this moment of crisis. We cannot allow tyranny and oppression to take roots in our society. We must resist the forces that seek to undermine our freedom and trample upon our rights. To the members of Edo State House of Assembly who have chosen to forsake their oath of office and participate in this charade, I say this. History will judge Ashley for your betrayal of the people who elected you to represent their interests. But know this, you do not have the power to silence the voice of justice and truth. I call upon the judiciary and all relevant authorities to intervene and uphold the principles of justice and fairness. Let the truth prevail over lies. Let the rule of law triumph over lawlessness. I am confident that the legal system will vindicate me and expose the sham that has been orchestrated against me. I want to reaffirm my commitment to the people of Edo State, to the values that bind us together as a collective. I will not be deterred or intimidated by those who seek to subvert our democracy. I will continue to fight for the right and freedom of all Edolites, by extension Nigerians that suffer oppression. I will stand firm in my resolve to see justice done as we stand united in the face of tyranny and oppression, I urge all to remain calm and go about our lawful duties as good citizens and true Democrats. Together, we will overcome this dark chapter in our history and a much stronger and more resolute in our pursuit of freedom and just society. Thank you for the opportunity given me thus far. God bless Edo State. And God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I remain. Well, my people, at those three people, that's uh, Philip Schreiber. Uh, of course, uh, we don't expect anything less uh, or more, so to speak, and all of that. I don't. I don't know how many of you out there, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, have pity for 
for Philip Shaibu? I, I, I don't really know. Uh, I know that a lot of people don't have a pity for, for Philip Shaibu. I, I don't myself. Uh, because at the end of the day, until this moment, or until we started hearing that things have gone a bit sour between the two of them, they've been working together and all of that. And uh, whatever has happened to Philip Shaibu right now, I, I think that the concern of a do state people majorly is what have we entrenched by way of political governance? I think I think that's the major concern. And I did, I did that as a question. I said, do we not have, you know, have we not entrenched a new form of godfather? You know, a godfather that is undisputed? Because that's what it's looking at, like. But anyways, let us look at what went down behind the scene. The House of Assembly, okay, um, impeached Philip Shaibu, and these are some of the things, I, because I was interested to know the allegation against Philip Shaibu, okay, and all of that, and these are some of the things that went down at the level of the House of Assembly. Let's, let's just, we may not have seen this, but let's, let's watch a bit. Distinguished members, those back from the committee of people where the report of the seven part led to the investigation and initial notice of the management of the East East SLC, the particular law of the post committee was considered. It was taken part by part and the conclusion was to reach. Mr. 
Anyways, I don't say people are Nigerians. Let let me not belabor us with that. All those, uh, you know, uh, walkings of the house and all of that. But what happened was that the House of Assembly, you know, uh, of course, I don't know how they received the allegation, but they came up with the allegation that uh, majorly that the deputy governor has uh, made known publicly official government secrets, uh, basically. Uh, because the act of uh, perjury was was it perjury? I think it was perjury that was struck out of uh, the allegation against the governor of Edo State, and they did set up a seven man committee uh, to investigate the deputy governor of Edo State. Uh, the committee, like we heard, invited the deputy governor, and for whatever reason, they could not interface. And uh, of course, the committee, you know, allegedly you know, as claimed, did their investigation and uh, came up with a recommendation to the House of Assembly. And that recommendation was that the Deputy Governor was found guilty of revealing government secrets, you know, uh, publicly uh, and, all, uh, and all of that. And therefore, uh, the recommendation of impeachment, you know, uh, was, uh, you know, made known in their report. And therefore, right in the House, the Speaker of the House, uh, of course, called on uh, uh, members, and members adopted the report. And my brother Dev, uh, what's his name, uh, Charity, moved a motion, you know, consequently, of impeachment, you know, of uh, the Deputy Governor of Edo State. And of course, the Speaker of the House of Assembly, I mean, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly, seconded the motion and upon dividing the house okay uh, you could see the, the house voted in favor of the of the motion uh, that's what we were, you, were, you were seeing just now and uh, at the end of the day about 20 members of it of, of the house that were present 19 voted for Philip Shaibu to be impeached and of course, Philip Shaibu stood in peace. Let's just take a listen to the clerk of the house. Yes, and one, no. Thank you very much. The clerk, the members. The hello chairman again. It's uh, 19 members sitting in the hello chairman. And it seems has signed and time. Twenty members of the Hallow Chambers sitting right in the Hallow Chambers. And it seems signed to approve the reports of the panel. And one member the case flowing from the conclusion of the panel and I am voting of more than two third majority of this is as a view by head council by head council not just for an endorsement of the impeachment document the second time. I hereby on the rest pronounce that the deputy governor of the state, right to the world, Philip Shadow, is here by impeached. Like this, three copies of the show. Yes, there the gavel landed. The deputy governor stands in peace. Now, so you just say happen. Now, so you just take one rich. You understand what I'm saying? Now? And all of that. The deputy governor of a do state, you know, stood in peace from that particular uh, moment. Now, this there are so many implications, you know, to this. Uh, one of them is that. The deputy governor has lost all entitlements, all rights, all whatever it is, and all of that. Uh, but the options 
open to him, you know, is to go to court and, uh, of course, uh, challenge this uh, impeachment. But based on the, you know, uh, the terms of impeachment, uh, that he, he revealed government secrets, many people right now are seriously debating and discussing this and several other things. But something that is of a huge concern to the people of a do state, and very many people across that are following this, whether they like <laughs> or uh, uh, feel tribal, is that what is playing out in a do state? Okay, um, anybody should be impeached, but people probably want to hear that <coughs> the. The, the, the allegation or of impeachment or the, the indictment for impeachment, it's something really that is, you know? Anyways, I'm not going to go into that, but the, these, are, these are issues that people are discussing. Now, on the flip side of this, you know, why uh, Philip Shaibo is crying, somebody is celebrating. Somebody is celebrating. And uh, of course, I like everybody to know that we now have a new deputy governor of a do state, uh, <laughs> and that's the new deputy governor of a do state, uh, Omobayo Marvelous Godwin is from uh, a do not Omobayo Godwin. Uh, well, a, a lot of people may not know him very much, but there are a few things we are just going to talk about Marvelous here. Uh, <laughs> that's Marvelous you are seeing there. That's the Marvelous with the governor of a do state. This was his swearing in when he was sworn in. Immediately, the news came. As a matter of fact, I'm sure that before Philip Shaibu was impeached, this man had been prepared as a person to take over from, from Philip Shaibu because immediately he was impeached. The next thing was a gathering in the house, I mean, uh, in the government house for his uh, uh, oath of office and, of course, uh, inauguration, if you may, and all of that. Um, Shakespeare says, some people achieve greatness. Others are born into greatness. Why are there others who are just sat on their own and greatness will just fall upon them. <laughs> now, however you want to capture Mr. Omobayo, you know, who we hear is an engineer, the current deputy governor of a do state, uh, he's now thrust into the corridors of what many people would describe as the corridors of a greatness. And as a matter of fact, he himself, in acknowledgement of this, could not contain his emotions when he was being sworn in. And of course, uh, the young man, you know, uh, became the leader of an orchestra as far as the, 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 the you know, the, 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 the hall is concerned where he was being inaugurated. And of course, he led himself into some marvelous tunes. <laughs> That's Mr. Omabai. Very happy for for marvelous. He's thirty eight years old and all of that. Um, but there are a few questions. But before I go into the question, not come out to <laughs> want to stay with us. Before I go into these questions, you know, life is very funny. You know, and I don't know how many of you are going to read this particular clip I'm going to play. But some time ago, uh, the deputy governor of Edo State, Philip Shwabo, did pray for this marvelous. Now, if it is the prayer of the deputy governor for Marvelous that is coming to pass currently or not, well, it remains to be seen. Uh, again, it may not be, we may not be able to prove anything, but you know, when lie resembles truth, somehow we begin to believe. Let's take a listen, you know, to this clip. I find it quite 
intriguing, but that's what. Strength to strength, glory to glory. And because me, Sinora, so it's supposed better pass me and grow past me a bit. So that is why I pray, I pray for it. I say, in go better and in go grow past me. So I, we are convinced that I'm a bias telling qualities. From strength to strength, glory to glory. And because me, Sinora, so it's supposed better pass me and grow past me a bit. So that is why I pray, I pray for it. I say, in go better and in go grow past me. So I, we are convinced that Anyways, that is uh, but that's just disregard that. Let me just say, make another one join You understand? Because sometimes, if lie is about truth, you know, we will come to believe. You understand? Uh, well, that's very bad, bad. Now, the question is, on mobile until his appointment, we are not aware if he's a PDP member. But the important is that he's from a do state. Some people have asked me, is he not a Yoruba man? And I said, no. It's not a Yoruba man. So, I think we have investigated that much that the man is an Edo State man. That it bears on more bio, you know, that sounds like a Yoruba name, doesn't make him a Yoruba man. Yeah, there are so many people in Edo State. It's just like some people were talking of uh, Olu Akbata, they were trying to argue whether Olu Akbata is a Benima. No, Benima is a Benima. You know, so, Mobile is a Benima. So some of these people from Edo North area, some people from uh, some of the, of the edges of a do sound like Usain and all of that, somehow they bear names that are, you know, that sound like Yoruba names, and but they have very strong meanings and all of that. Uh, but it's purely, a mobile is purely an Edo statement from a do not, okay? But the intriguing thing is, which is another question people are asking, a mobile. Until his appointment as a deputy governor of a do state was and probably still is a full fledged member of the Labour Party who even contested the election under the Labour Party. He's recognized as a, a very astute mobilizer from his own constituency in all those on uh, one, what's it called, the Edo North areas of a do state. He's a member of the obedient movement of well, not the obedient movement of the Labour Party. As a matter of fact, I am aware too that Omobayo works very, very closely with some of the aspirants in the last just concluded governorship primaries of the Labour Party. Now. The PDP governor has now appointed him as the deputy governor of a do state. And as a do state citizen, he has a right to accept, you know, such, you know, a, a dignified office that is being, is, that is being thrust on him. Now, the question people are now asking is, is it that Governor Obaseki blatantly want to just disregard everything legacy PDP or old PDP or even the new PDP, so to speak. Because if you look at it, these are I mean these are issues coming from you know the nucleus. And look, and look, I, I find them to be valid. There, there are people in this political party that have worked assiduously for this political party that equally merit positions like this. But he left old PDP, left new PDP, went to pick somebody from Labour Party. It might be a question for another day, but I just want to ask it. You may consider it a rhetorical question, but as the day go by in this election that is coming, People will have cause to touch on all of these matters. Particularly again, when Aswe Igodalo, okay, has been made the candidate of the PDP. As a matter of fact, people can argue easily that it is because of Aswe Igodalo today that Felix Shaibu is suffering the fate he's suffering right now. Because of Baseki does not want anything that will impede or distort or disturb 
Aswe Udalo. Now, even when Aswe Udalo has emerged, given the history that has existed within the PDP, Obasa King still went ahead. Where? This is what everybody is going to say. To anoint his SSG as the running mate for Aswe Udalo. And people have asked, whatever happened to the resident PDP members that you came from APC to come and meet? It may be a case for another day. We are not going to escape it. We will discuss it. We will discuss it. Because the picture of the governor of Basaki we are seeing now, that we are knowing now, that many people are waking up to see now, is a different picture altogether that people have or had in 2020 to make them support the ticket. I congratulate Omobayo. Uh, and that's why I said earlier he may be living the dream the dream as uh, espoused already by great William Shakespeare who said that some people are born into greatness others achieve it while some others have it thrust upon them whether Boba is born into it he has achieved it or it's just thrust upon him Omobayo is now working in the corridor, corridors of what many people will regard as greatness. But it's just to establish that Omobayo, until his appointment, is a member of the Labour, a Labour Party. What that means, or what strategy that is, or would be, remains to be seen. <laughs> but, Filishaibu is crying, Omobayo is smiling, and a those state people are asking questions. Nigerians, my name is Kumi Lamtoria. He's been a comrade show. I've been more to share our broadcast. I'm going to stay with us. Very soon, we are going to be bringing some of the other candidates, you know, to the platform to come and share with us. God <laughs> uh, go bless you, Nasha. Happy days. I'm back for now. <laughs>